Shalom. So this lesson that we're about to get into is about the Day of Atonement, the correct way to keep it. How us Israelites keep the Day of Atonement. So we're going to start at Leviticus 16, 29-34. Leviticus 16, 29. And this shall be a statue forever unto you. Oh, so it says it should be a statue forever so forever means throughout our generation that we constantly have to keep this statue, right? Go ahead. That in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your soul. So it said the seventh month. We in the seventh month right now, and it's called Ethereum. Our months is calculated by the moon. That's how we calculate our months, and that's how we that's how we know what month we in. Go ahead. On the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all. Hold that right there. It said that we're supposed to afflict our souls. So we got to understand what affliction means. It means to humble. So you have to humble yourself. Cause pain or suffer, right? So we have to afflict our soul, afflict our body, our flesh. We have to suffer, and the way we suffer is by fasting, a complete fast with eat with no eating or no drinking. Go ahead. And do no work at all. So you see that? It says do no work at all. So that means no work at all. Alright? Whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. If you have people in your house, you know what I'm saying, are you on a business, they cannot work. You have to close down that business or whatever. Or if you have people in your house, they have to fast with you. Go ahead. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you. So the atonement that we supposed that the priest will make for us. The atonement is Yahawasha. So Yahawasha is our priest and he's that atonement. So we have to have faith in Yahawasha. So let's get that in um uh what's that Revelations uh, 14 and 12? So this atonement that the priest would normally do for us, we don't have to do that no more. This atonement is going into having faith in Yahawasha, right? But we still gotta give ourselves, our body. As a living sacrifice, as an atonement, right? So these are two separate atonements it's talking about. Go ahead. Revelations 14 and 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Right. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yah. Right. And the faith of Yahweh Shai. So read that one more time so we get an understanding. Here is the patience of the saints. So we are the saints. So here's our patience. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yah. So we got to keep the commandments of of the Most High, go ahead. And the faith of Yahweh Shah. And the faith of Yahweh Shah. The faith of Yahweh Shah is Him being that ultimate sacrifice. That's the faith that we're supposed to keep of Yahweh Shah. Because He was that sacrifice, He took the place of a sin offering. So we don't have to do sin offerings no more because we don't have cattle. Go ahead. Back to Leviticus 16 30. For on that day, the priest shall make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that ye may be clean from all your sins before Yah. Right. You could jump down to 34 before we can wrap this one up and we will go to a precept. And this shall be an everlasting statue unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel. Oh, right there. You see that? It says a what statue? Everlasting statue. So what do that mean? That means that we have to keep this statue forever. Just because people say, oh, Yahweh is the atonement. Oh, Yahweh is the uh, Sabbath. Yahweh created all this stuff. That's what people don't understand. Yahweh the one that gave us all these laws. Yahweh, the creator, the most high, created Yahweh and he created everything else. So, yes, Yahweh is our atonement. Yes, Yahweh or who the world ignorantly called Jesus, is our uh, Sabbath. Because he created the Sabbath and he gave it to us. So we could keep it. So we could uh, uh, worship him in righteousness. So we could be a what? A difference bef between the other nations, right? Set apart. So we could be set apart, right? Go ahead. 
And this shall be an everlasting statue unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel. For everlasting statue for us, right? Go ahead. Children of Israel for all their sins once a year. Right. So we supposed to keep this what? Once a year, it says. In 34, it says we supposed to keep it once a year, right? And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. Right. So we will get a precept on this, and this precept is going to be in Leviticus 23 to 27 to 32. So this is just another verse to go with the verse we just read to give us a deeper understanding. Go ahead. Leviticus 23, 30. To 20, uh, 27. 27. Yeah. Also, on the 10th day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. Right. It shall be a holy convocation unto you. Right. And ye shall afflict your souls. Hold that right there. So there we go. Afflict our souls again. So we will keep seeing this. So afflict our souls, like I told you, it means to suffer or cause pain and to humble, humble yourself. So that's what we must do. We got to humble ourselves. We got to afflict our souls. We got to cause pain. We got to do a proper fast. We can't do a fast like the Christian church do, because the Christian church do a water fast. We got to do a proper fast, and we have to do it according to what it says in the scriptures. Go ahead. And offer an offering made by fire unto Yah. And ye shall do no work in the same day, for it is a day of atonement. Right. To make an atonement for you before Yah. So right there, it told us again to do no work. This is serious. So we're not supposed to do no work, like it says. We got to follow these the uh, scriptures because the Bible is giving us the instructions on how to live righteously on earth. So we have to follow these instructions. We can't go off what's in our heart. You know what I'm saying? If we uh, believe in the most high, we have to follow his word that he left us. And his word is coming from this book. Go ahead. 29. For whatsoever soul it be... That shall not be afflicted in that same day. He shall be cut off from among his people. So you hear that? It said if you do not keep the day of atonement, you will be cut off. Right? Go ahead. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in the same day. Hold that right there. It said you can't even work. Watch this. Watch this. That do with any work in that same day, that same soul will I destroy from among his people. He said, if you do any work, he will destroy you, man. You know what I'm saying? So this is serious. We have to follow these scriptures, how the Most High gave the word to his prophets to put in his book. So we have to go with the scriptures say. We can't go with man say. You know what I'm saying? Because he told us to, to uh, keep not the traditions of man in Col Colossians 3 and 8. So we can't follow what man say. We got to go with the scriptures say because these are instructions on how to serve our creator, man. These are the instructions. Go ahead. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. Right. It's, it's supposed to be like a Sabbath of rest. Right? Go ahead. And ye shall afflict your souls. There we go again. Afflict your souls. In the ninth day of the month at even. So it said the ninth day at the of the month at evening. Right? So our evening as Israelites, because we follow what it's saying in the scriptures, our evening, it starts when the sun starts dying and going down, right? And it's starting to get dark. That's the beginning of our day until the next evening, right? So it's evening to evening. That's when our day starts. But the world does something a little bit different. But us Israelites, that's how we keep it. Because we're set apart. You feel me? Go ahead. From even to even... Shall ye celebrate your Sabbath? Right, right, right. That's it on that? Mm -hmm. All right, go to uh, Isaiah 58 and start at 3. And so we're not supposed to fast like the Christian church, right? We're not supposed to fast in wickedness, you know? You have to clear your mind, afflict your soul, right? And fast in righteousness. So don't have evil thoughts in your head. You know what I'm saying? Don't have no angry intent. With a family member, a friend, you have to 
let all them people go and live their life, right? And change your ways. That's the whole thing about being an Israelite is changing and living, to, uh, 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 striving to be righteous and keep the most high laws because the, the most high laws teaches you how to be righteous. We never had this because we, we was born in wickedness. But now we're starting to understand his scriptures, his book, and we're starting to learn how to live righteous. So you have to let all your old family members go. Let them live their life and do what they do. And you change yourself and you live righteously, righteously unto the most high so you can get your name put in the book of life. You feel me? So you have to go into this fast with a clear mind. Go ahead. Isaiah 58, 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our souls? And thou takest no knowledge. Mm -hmm. Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold. Yeah, so the day of your fast, you're going out, finding pleasure. You know what I'm saying? You're just doing everything that worldly people do. Go ahead. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. Yeah, so you fast to be seen of man. And you fast to, be, uh, to debate. Nah, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be in secret. Go ahead. And to smite with the fist of wickedness. Right, right. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day. Right. To make your voice to be heard on high. Mm hmm Is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush? Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And to spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Right. With so it's telling us how to do it. It's giving us instructions on how he's supposed to fast. It says to put what? Sackcloth and sackcloth ashes. Sackcloth and ashes. So you're supposed to get you a sackcloth. You're supposed to wear a sackcloth, right? Why? Because you're afflicting your soul. You're bringing pain upon you, right? You bring yourself all the way down so you can strengthen your spirit, right? And you're showing the Most High that you give yourself as a living sacrifice for Him to forgive you of your sins. Go ahead. Will thou call this a fast, an acceptable day to Yah? Right, right. Is this, is not this the fast that I have chosen? So this is the fast that the Most High have chosen for us, right? So we got to do His fast. We can't do the fast of the hypocrites. We can't do the fast of the world. We have to do His fast that's instructed in, these, in this book. Go ahead. To loosen the bands of wickedness. Right, because He's going to loosen the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free. Right, right. And that ye break every yoke. That's six. Right, right. So that's good on that. So let's get a precept on that. We'll get a precept in Matthew chapter 6. Mm -hmm. So here goes our precept because we can't go into this fast like the hypocrites, right? We got to anoint our head with oil and fast in secret, right? You know what I'm saying? So that's how we got to do this fast. We got to anoint our head in oil, put on your sock cloth, right? And we have to fast in secret because the Most High go will ward us openly. Go ahead. Matthew 6 and... Matthew 6, 17. Matthew 6, 17. But thou, when thou fast, anoint thy head and wash thy face. Right. You see that? It says when we fast, anoint our head and wash your face, right? Why, Why are we supposed to do this? That thou appear not unto men to fast. Right. So you won't look like you fasting. Go ahead. But unto thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Right. So the father is the most high. He will see you fasting in secret. And what he going to do? Reward you thee openly. openly. Right, right, right. So that's how we're supposed to fast, man. We gotta fast according to scripture. Because if we don't fast according to scripture, we're not fasting right, right? Now we'll get an account in Esther how they was fasting when they was in the Persian and Mede captivity, right? Under King of Assyrius. You know what I'm saying? So we was in a Persian and Mede captivity under King Assyrius, right? And Malachi was our leader, right? So we was fasting because we were trying to get the Most High to hear our prayers. And this is going to be an account of the proper way that we're supposed to fast. 
Go to uh, Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Esther 4, 16. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shashun. Right. And fast ye for me. And neither eat nor see, see drink. That? It said neither eat nor drink. That's how you're supposed to fast. This is according to the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? How we Israelites supposed to fast. We're not supposed to fast like the Christian church when they just have water fast and fruit fast and stuff like that. That's not correct. That's nothing. We have to do what the Most High say in his scriptures, right? We can't go off uh, following man's traditions and following how they do things. We have to do it the correct way, how the Most High said in his scriptures, because if you don't do it that way, your fast is wrong. That's right. And you're going to be cut off from the kingdom. That's right. And that's what it says in the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? Don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't buck up at me. You have to read the scriptures and you have to buck up with the most high. That's who you have a problem with. When you say all oh, the laws is done away with, uh, you don't have to do that. You have a problem with the most high. So you got to take that problem up with him. I'm just showing you what it's saying in the scriptures. Go ahead. Neither eat nor drink three days. It said neither eat nor drink. They was doing a fast for three days. The most high said in the scriptures, we have to do we could do a fast for one day for the day of atonement, and that's from evening to evening, right? So this is how you're supposed to do it. Go ahead. Night or day. Right. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Yeah, if you die, you die. So you can't say, oh, um, I still got to take my medicine. Nah, you can't take no medicine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need a sip of water. Yeah. You can't have a sip of water. Oh, my uh, blood pressure is high. Whatever you need, blood pressure pill, my diabetes, I need a little bit of sugar. Nah, it says if you die, you die. Because you're afflicting your soul, just like I showed you, you're supposed to bring pain upon yourself, right? Okay. You're supposed to uh, uh, go through suffering. If you don't go through no suffering, you're not fasting the correct way, according to the scriptures. You keep in traditions of man, and what the Most High say about the traditions of man, you go to uh, Colossians, uh, I think that's chapter uh, 2, verse 8. The Most High said we're not supposed to keep the traditions of man, man. Because once you keep the traditions of man, they're going off. Got it? Um, almost. Colossians 2 and 8. Right. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Yahweh Shah. And not after Yahweh Shah. You're not following Yahweh Shah if you're not doing the traditions and the way the fast in these scriptures. You're not following him. So keep the Day of the Atonement the correct way that it says in the scriptures. Use these precepts. Precepts is verses. Use these verses. Go over these verses that I uh, that we brung out. And that's going to show you how you're supposed to fast. Shalom. Shalom.